a reading from Mark 5, from verse 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put all them outside, and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. As we come to this passage, we come to the close of a series of passages in Mark's Gospel, which serve to make the point that Jesus is God. We've had the parable of the sower as well that makes the point that even the best seed, if it falls upon the path, will not grow. The best seed can come to nothing. It all depends on the receptiveness of the soil or the ground upon which it falls. And, and so we find here a series of events where we find that acted out, that Jesus may preach but the response is somewhat lacking at times because others, sorry, some people are just simply not receptive. And all this sets up Christ's future sermons and the various responses that he receives. And there was that incident, you'll remember, following on of the storm-tossed boat, where the disciples were fearful for their very lives while Christ lay sleeping comfortably upon a cushion in the boat and He'd said that they'd go over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee and over the other side they went, storm notwithstanding. And as Jesus stilled the storm with a word, they said, who is this? The disciples wondered quite who Jesus was. And then you recall there was that whole business with Legion. And you'll remember that he was a man who was much possessed and living in the land of the Gerasenes. And he was brought to his senses and Jesus cast out the demons from him. He'd shown his mastery over nature with the calming of the storm. Now he showed his mastery over the spiritual realm as well. And there's more in today's passage because today's passage here asks that most vital of questions. How do we approach 
this figure? How do we approach God? How is Christ to be approached, the one who's masterful over creation and also the spiritual realm? How are we to be those who are like the receptive soil, those in whom the seed of the gospel will grow 30, 60, 100 fold? Well, on the surface, of course, these two people couldn't be further apart. One is a nameless woman who has this real hemorrhaging problem that renders her unclean. The other is named. We know who he is. He's not some unnamed person as the woman was. He's named. He's a synagogue ruler. One is steamed in society, whereas the other one, well, she is simply unclean. But they both came to Jesus in such a way that both of them left with their petitions answered. So what is it that Mark is telling us here? The two are clearly meant to be understood together because, well, Jairus happens and then the woman and then we get the end of Jairus' story. They're, they're knitted together, they're webbed together, they're supposed to be taken together. So what are they telling us? Well, I would suggest they're telling us simply this, that as we approach God, we need to understand that God is a person that as we approach God, we need to understand that he's not simply some vague force, but he's somebody with whom we engage. That's the point. We pray, not uttering invocations or saying mantras. We engage as we pray. So in the person of Christ, you see, we see God. And we therefore understand that, that God isn't some sort of force, some vague thing to be channeled, something that might live in Star Wars. No, God is a person and we see this in Christ. These two came, Jairus and the woman, and reached out seeking mercy from Jesus and received it. They came to Jesus, they took the risk and they threw themselves on Jesus's mercy and they trusted him. And they had faith in him. And Jesus bolstered both of them, encouraging them in their faith. Their circumstances didn't matter. All the timing, what matters is the way that they came to Christ. It doesn't have to be bold. It can be just faltering, like the woman who reaches out to touch his garments. The point is they both came with faith. Maybe weak, but nonetheless they had it. The fact of the matter is, is that God does exist and the way that we engage with him, therefore, is an important one. It's an eternal question. Do you rely on your family religion or some inherited religion or some vague sense of God? Or do you rely upon the God revealed to us in the person of Christ, a God with whom we engage do you think of God as a force or do you think of him as a person? Are you willing to meekly simply reach out with the faith that you have and seek his mercy? Well, here in this passage, we find two starkly contrasting people. One named uh, upstanding fellow who comes to Jesus and asks him. One an unnamed woman who is ritually unclean and simply reaches out in the crowd to touch him. They both, though, reached out with what they had. And that's all that they needed to do. That's all that we need to do. So will you, will you do just that? <laughs>